Have you ever looked out a window and you've got a magnificent view, but it's kind of ruined because the window hasn't been washed. It's just kind of, everything looks kind of grimy and it needs to be cleaned and then everything's going to be nice and crisp and sharp. Well, sometimes our photographs get like that. When they're lacking contrast, they look like you're looking through a dirty window. And other times they can have weird color contrasts or maybe just something doesn't look right in the photo. It doesn't pop. It doesn't have that punch. Well, there's a tool inside of Photoshop that can fix that in three clicks, and that's the eyedropper tool. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you exactly how to use the eyedropper tool, and it's a lot easier than you think, and you're only three clicks away from making your photographs look better quickly and reliably. <laughs> Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com, the very best place to learn Photoshop and Lightroom. Today I've got a great tutorial for you. I'm going to unveil the mysteries of the eyedropper tool. In fact, there's not really that much to it. So what we're going to do is use it to fix this photograph. But first, I'm just going to open up a grayscale just so we can see how this works. Now, this eyedropper tool lives in a couple of places, under levels and under curves. So if I hit the control L, it'll bring up levels and you can see three eyedroppers there. If I bring control M for curves, we can see those same eyedroppers are there. And lo and behold, under the adjustment layers, levels and curves, you're going to see that these same eyedropper tools live right there. So I'm going to show you exactly how they work. Before I do, I've got a curious question for you. What's your favorite adjustment tool? Do you like curves? Do you go to levels or do you go to camera raw? Let me know in the comments underneath. Okay, so there's three eyedroppers here. There's a black, a gray, and a white. Now the black one, what it does is it sets the black point. The white one sets the white point. Well, what does that mean? I'm going to demonstrate right now. If we click the black and we notice this area of our gradient is black, but if I move it down here to this area of gray and I click, it's going to force that to be black now. And notice it creates a smooth graduation into the rest of the image. So let's do the same thing with the white. We're going to click on the white in this area of gray. Click once. So notice now where we clicked is pure white and everything before it is now forced to white. And then there's a nice smooth gradation between this white and the rest of the image. So what it does is it forces those tones and any tone lighter than this to pure white. The black one forces that tone and any other tone darker than it to pure black and blows out detail. Well, this is very useful. So we're going to open up the adjustment layer and we're going to choose a levels adjustment. Now, before I go in and apply these, there's another little trick I want to show you guys. And that's creating a little bit of headroom. Because if I force the area to pure black or I force it to pure white, not only are we blowing out little bits of minute detail, it can also look clogged up when we print it. So we want to give ourselves about 5% overhead. And this is how we do that. We're going to start with the black. And we're going to double click on it. And then what it does is it brings up a color picker. We've got HSB, which is brightness. It's set to zero. We're going to change it to five. And notice it moves that point up from that pure black to a very dark gray. And you can see in here that allows that detail. And we're just going to click yes. Now we're going to double click and we're going to do the same thing for the white. Notice the brightness set to 100. We're now going to change it to 95 and notice now it's a light gray. Click OK. And once again, you'll get this set the new colors as default. So now that we've set the little bit of overhead there, Photoshop's going to remember that. We're never going to have to do it again until we reinstall Photoshop. What we want to do is we'll start with the black and we can see the little black there. And what we want to do is click this on the darkest part of the photograph. Now, here's a tip. Here's how to find the darkest part of the photograph. Hold down the Alt or the Option key and then hold that down and then click and pull this triangle in. As we do, we'll start to see some areas come up there in the first area to go solid black. What it's doing is it's showing the clipping there as we pull it in. And I can see the darkest area is right up there. So I'm just going to click there and now that sets the darkest point of the image. Let's do the same thing in the light part of the image. So we're going to hold down Alt Option, click, 
hold and then we're just going to drag it across and we can see yeah those headlights are the first area but also notice your scarf there and i can just let go of the alt or the option at any time and i see there's a nice reflection there from that uh, fluorescent light hitting there now I know these are gonna be the brightest part of the image, so why don't we try it? We're gonna grab the white eyedropper and we can click in those areas and that'll set the whites. If you want it to be a little brighter, we could go into this area and click there and that'll give us more brightness. Sometimes I'll choose something like this rather than area that's creating light because uh, that'll just brighten up the image a little bit more. So now we're left with our gray eyedropper and you may ask what the gray eyedropper is for. It, it doesn't set the midtones. What it does is it sets the white point. So after you've set your highlights and shadows, then we're gonna set the gray point, which is gonna do one click color correction. In fact, a lot of the time when I do photographs, I use this eyedropper alone and it will just instantly fix color correction issues. Okay, so we're looking for an area that should be gray. We could pick some of this um, air conditioning duct, but be careful of reflective surfaces because those surfaces actually reflect different colors sometimes. I know this wall here is supposed to be a neutral color. So with that gray point, I'm just gonna click on there and notice what it does is it instantly gets rid of the color cast. So if we look at this before and then after, you can see the eyedropper tool is an incredible way, great way to fix the photo in three clicks. Now there's other ways to work in photographs which give us more control over some of the midtone values and individual colors. And that's using curves and I have a great tutorial and I'm gonna link it underneath. Now, if you like this tutorial, smash that like button into dust. And if you like these kind of tutorials, I do a new tutorial every single Tuesday and sometimes an additional one on Saturdays as well. And for you to get those, make sure you hit the subscribe button right now and a change in YouTube, you have to hit that little notification bell as well. Make sure you hit that and then you'll be informed whenever I upload my new tutorials. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Got any questions, comments? Drop them in the comments underneath. I respond to them all. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.